Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. You guys guess what day it is? You might say it's the middle of January because that's probably when I'm going to be posting this video. Do you think these bees would be bearding like this if it was the middle of January? In fact, uh, right now it's uh, 90 plus degrees here in the shade uh, with a relative humidity of around 25%, which is actually sort of high, probably because I had this sitting in the grass. You see that? It's the 6th of July. Which means we're actually the farthest from the sun that we get all year. Which is crazy because of the insane heat. Let's uh, go out into the sun, put this camera on a telescope, and uh, have a look at it, shall we? So here's the scope. You can see I've got a sun shield on the front so that we can have a look at the sun. And a mount for my camera. Okay, and there it is, the sun. The camera's gonna adjust the brightness down to the point where I can't really see it. Hopefully you guys can see it better. It doesn't look like there's any sunspots right now. So it's gonna be a pretty boring view. The blank disk of the sun. There it is, the sun at Aphelion. Well, I guess the Earth's at Aphelion. The sun's just kind of at the same spot. But this is the farthest from it we're going to get all year. So I'm going to take some screenshots of this and we can take some pixel measurements and then see if we come back during uh, perihelion if it'll be any bigger. <clears throat> Shouldn't be by much. The Earth only varies in distance by about 2%, 2 or 3%. But as long as I use the same telescope and the same camera we should be good to go. Alright, so here we are about six months later. It's currently 10 a.m. on January 2nd, 2019. A lot of things has changed. As you can see, the bees are no longer bearding. In fact, they're all bundled up tight. Uh, the city made me mow my sugar beets, so they're no longer here. Although I would have gotten rid of them by now anyway. Uh, my armor is taking shape, and it's rather cold. Uh, in fact, if I scrape the frost off the thermometer here, you can see that uh, it's well below freezing. So, let's go have a look at the sun. All right, so here's the setup. Same as what I had back in July. Same camera, same telescope. You notice there's no lens here, so it's just shining directly onto the sensor. Uh, so even if the camera's settings are different, the actual size of the image should be the same, assuming the sun is at the same distance, which it shouldn't be. And there it is. The sun viewed from the Earth at perihelion. So it looks about the same. Looks like we do have a small sunspot there. Uh, Size-wise, it looks about the same. But that makes sense since it shouldn't be that much different. And I am looking at it on the display of my camera. We'll get this in uh, onto the other computer so we can actually do some measurements. With the photos placed side by side, it is now quite easy to see that the sun does indeed appear larger now that we're at perihelion. But just to make sure and to get some actual numbers, I put the photos into MS Paint and did a simple pixel measurement, which you can see here. I also calculated the area, and the sun at aphelion is about 93% as large as it is at perihelion, which corresponds to approximately that level of brightness difference. So now a lot of you are probably wondering why it is that if we are closer to the sun in January, it appears larger, we're receiving more energy from it, how could we be colder in January than it is in July? The answer to that is that the brightness of the sun really doesn't affect the Earth's climate all that much. Uh, it's just not that big of a change. The tilt of the Earth is way more significant. Uh, since we are in the northern hemisphere, we happen to be facing away from the sun, the angle is different, we're encountering less light, 
and so it gets colder. If you're in the southern hemisphere, the opposite is true, and in fact it does get hotter during the summer, and southern summers should actually be hotter than northern summers given all the same variables. So, hope you enjoyed, I'll see you next time. So one more thing that I forgot to mention that I know the Flat Earthers are going to bring up, and that is the time of day that I took the measurement. Uh, in July I took it about 4 p.m., and uh, here in January I took it around 11 a.m. Now, my counter to that is the Earth's rotation will change your distance to the Sun, but only by a couple thousand miles. And when you're talking about millions of miles, that's insignificant. Also, at about 4 p.m., the sun would be so low on the horizon that I would have other problems measuring it. In fact, the sun at this time of year is about the same height above the horizon at about 11 a.m. as it is at 4 p.m. in July. So. <laughs>